Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video where we'll be tackling the claim that people make that the inverse square law apparently proves the moon landings didn't happen. In case you're not familiar with the inverse square law, you're probably already familiar with the concept that as you move an object nearer to a light source, then the object becomes more illuminated, and as you move it away from the light source, it becomes less illuminated. This is because the light from the source is shining out in all directions, so the further away that the object is, then the less light from it is going to hit it. And the inverse square law says if you half the distance from the light source, the object gets hit with four times more light. And if you double the distance away, then the object only gets a quarter of the amount. Now, the claim that this seemingly disproves the moon landings is that people argue, given how bright the moon looks in the sky from 230,000 miles away, if you were to keep halving your distance to the moon until you got there, then the moon should appear something like 50,000 times brighter, and the surface of it would be too bright for people to land on. Or at least it would look much brighter than the photos and videos show, so therefore the photos and videos must not have been taken there, right? Well, this really suffers from quite a big misunderstanding about lighting and the inverse square law. For starters, the inverse square law refers specifically to a point source of light, i.e. a single spot of light, which obviously the moon isn't. And as you move closer to objects, their apparent size changes. If you were to half your distance to an object, their angular size would double, but it would double both in height and width, so the total area will increase by a factor of four. So the object is getting four times more light from the light source, but because the light source now appears four times larger, the light source itself doesn't actually look any brighter. It just looks bigger. In just the same way as any building or mountain doesn't gradually get brighter as you move towards them or dimmer as you move away from them. But for a simple demonstration, here I have a light panel that I set up and I set up a camera about two feet from it. I put the light on low power and I put the camera settings such that it made the light appear very dim. And then I took a photo before moving the camera back to eight feet away from the light, which is four times the distance. So according to some people's notion of the inverse square law, the light should now appear 16 times dimmer. And yet with the same camera settings, the light has exactly the same exposure. It just looks a lot smaller. If you were to stand on the roof of your house and look down at the ground, the ground would have exactly the same brightness as if you jumped in an aeroplane and flew over your house 30,000 feet in the air. If I hold a reflector near me, the light reflecting off it is going in all directions, but because it's very close to me, then a lot of the light is hitting me. But if I move it further away, then less light is now hitting me and more of it's missing. But the reflector itself doesn't look any dimmer. So the brightness of the moon's surface wouldn't really change whether you were standing on the moon or standing on Earth looking at the moon. But even though the lights themselves don't look any brighter as you move closer to them, the amount of light hitting the object from them does increase as that object gets closer. So would that mean the amount of light hitting the spacecraft from the moon would increase as they got nearer? Yes. But the moon is not the only source of light they would be dealing with. The main source lighting them up is still the sun, and it's 93 million miles away. So moving 230,000 miles between the moon and the earth is not going to make much difference in terms of how much extra light they are receiving from the sun. And the whole time that the spacecraft is moving towards the moon, it's moving away from the earth, which is both much larger than the moon and more reflective. The moon has a visible cross-section of about 3.6 million square miles, and it's reflecting about 10% of the sunlight that reaches it, whilst the Earth has a visible cross-section of about 49 million square miles, and it can reflect almost 40% of the light. So if anything, the light would be reducing as they travel to the moon, not increasing. Now, I know when we look at the moon in the night sky, it does look pretty bright, and people think it would then look 50,000 times brighter, but the only reason the moon seems bright is because when you're looking at it in a night sky, your eyes are adjusting to the blackness of the sky around it, which then makes the moon glow. 
Like how if you had the light on your phone in daylight, it looks very dim, but if you then take it into a pitch black room, it suddenly looks very bright, even though it's not really. On a clear night with a full moon and no other ambient light sources around, the light from the moon measures around 0.1 lux in illuminance. Now, for reference, one lux is how much light would land on a one meter square area from a one lumen light source placed one meter away. A candle is one lumen. So you would need 10 full moons in the sky to light up a square meter area of Earth as brightly as a candle would from a meter off the ground. By comparison, a shaded part of Earth at midday on a clear blue sky day is 20,000 lux, which is 200,000 times brighter than moonlight. And another thing to remember is as you get closer to the moon, you see less of it. The moon has a total surface area of 14.6 million square miles, and from Earth we're seeing roughly half of that, so about 7 million square miles, but as you get closer to the moon, more and more of the surface would disappear beyond the moon's horizon. On the surface of the moon, because it's much smaller than the Earth, the horizon is only about two miles away, which would then form a circle round you, meaning you would only actually have about 12 and a half square miles of the moon actually reflecting light back at the astronauts. Much like how on sunny days here on Earth, you're only actually seeing a small fraction of the light from the sun that is reflecting off the Earth because you can only see a small part of the Earth's surface. But if you go up in a plane, you'll see much more of it. But it doesn't now look any brighter because you've also moved further away from it. So the inverse square law, in fact, does nothing to discredit the moon landings. And so that's going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.